so funny? Nothing, nothing. I was, I was just thinking about last summer. Remember when you were coaching me and we came up here and I was carrying my book? And so you had to help me down and, and I said that I could manage, manage on my own. my own. Yeah, I remember very well. Yeah. Listen, I don't, I don't want any more of that kind of talk anymore, okay? Well, I'll never say that again, I promise. I could never manage on my own now that I found you. I need to tell you, and I always will. Our morning dip. trying to make our apartment livable. Hey, the only thing our apartment needs to be livable is you there. You know, I've been thinking. After everything gets settled and, and we're on some kind of a schedule, you know, I think I should get some sort of a job and help with expenses. Oh, no, we have plenty of time to talk about that. I know, but I just want to talk out everything so that... Well, so that... I mean, I know how important honesty is to you, and I, I don't want you to ever think that I'm purposely keeping something from me. I mean, even if it's just something I'm thinking about. Well, if we're always that honest with each other, you can't go wrong. Yeah. But I mean, like, if you get annoyed at me about something, I want you to tell me about it right away so that it doesn't build up and, and until you get really angry with me. Okay. But at this moment, I can't imagine ever getting angry or annoyed at you or for anything. It will happen. It's bound to. I remember my mother and father arguing. And just look at Ben and Amanda and Hope and Alan. I mean, if they had talked things out, they might still be together. I don't want anything to go wrong with our marriage. As long as we both feel that way, it won't. Hmm. Oh, you feel so wonderful. Mm, so do you. Kelly, take me back to the cottage and make love to me. I feel so secure when I'm in your arms. I want you always to feel secure. Even when I'm not with you. Maybe that'll happen someday, but right now you're my security. I need one person to make a deal with me. That person is you, my friend. Come. Come, come, come. Hey, it's nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. I, I love this look. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's inspired by um, Steve Urkel and Fresh Prince. I like that. Very nice. I like that. Now, curtain number three is yours, my friend. Curtain number three is yours. Now, here's a clue. The prize behind curtain number three 
it has wheels. It has wheels just like from the first deal of the day. Now, it may be a leftover car. Remember, we had two cars. Well, three. Two were good cars, one was a junker, or it may be something completely different. So you decide, my friend. You want to go with number three, or tell you what, give you $600 to add to your wardrobe. <laughs> I'll get you a Kango to go on top. Kang I'm, I'm really, really curious what's going on behind door number three. How about $800? I'll get you some spats. Door number three. I, I tell you what, I give you $1,000. $1,000. I'm getting a lot of peer pressure from the guy, so... I, I think I'm gonna go with door number three. He's giving up the money. Go with door number three. Offered you a thousand dollars. You've taken this. It's a new dune buggy. Dune buggy, sir. Let the dirt fly with this BMS dune buggy 400 sand sniper, featuring high quality go kart seats, a semi-automatic transmission, and a handy rear storage deck. This deal's worth five thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars. Did I do that? Nice job, Mr. Man. Good job. You know what I need right now? One more person. One more person to make a deal with me. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so you take a full turn. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice part. You know, seeing Kim in action just makes me respect her even more. She is really amazing. I mean, no matter what happens, she keeps her cool, she gets everything done, always in the easiest of going ways. You know, Doug, sometimes I get the feeling that you're taking me out just to be around Kim or the rest of my family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm, maybe there's some truth to it. I mean, it's kind of like stepping into a ready-made family. <laughs> hey, what happened to the portrait? Hmm? It's gone, Caroline's portrait. It's gone. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I took that down. No. Why? Because you are my future now that you're wearing my ring. It's time to put away the reminders of the past. Oh, Doug, it didn't bother me. It really didn't. Yeah, well, it was, it was starting to bother me, though, you know. I'm, I mean, obviously, I can't change the name of the restaurant. That would confuse the patrons. And it always will be kind of a memorial to Caroline. But I think it's time for the portrait to go back to Texas with Marsha. I love you. Good. You're stuck with me. Would you... Would you excuse me for a minute? Sure. Sure. I, uh, I, I want to go upstairs and, uh... Check out my bedroom. The models are using it as a dressing room. It's always as new as a pen. Yeah, well, you know me. I want to make sure. I'll be back. Oh, I love you. Still? Bye. I wish it always to my little lost lad, Kimberly Sussman. I'm not lost any longer. Yes. I knew you'd be in there. What is it, Marcia? I thought you should know. Kevin just told Franny he overheard us talking about the police putting it all together. What? We have to leave, Douglas. We can't wait any longer. talk about with my friends and with my family all the time. She actually responded, he, he told her he felt very ambivalent about the fact that she'd been nominated and what she said was that very mindset that you and a lot of African Americans have is absolutely destroying the black artist. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really incredible response, a very brave response because the idea is that because of stereotypes, because of prejudice, black artists can't just make a choice. They can't just say, I'd like to play this role because it's a great role. I'd like to play this character because it speaks to me. It's like, what is this going to say about my people? How is this going to represent everybody? How is my family going to... And, and other artists don't, don't have to make that choice. They don't have to th have that weight on them all the time. And I'm looking forward to a time when there are enough roles of diverse caliber that you can just pick a role because you think, I'm going to be able to do a great That's job right. with it. That's right. And you know, let me, let me just say, see... 
You gotta look at Monique played one of the greatest villains in Precious. Mm -hmm. Denzel Washington, great villain. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. you know, so you got to give it up to them. Yeah, in but day. Uh, there were other people playing maids that uh, we kind of upset about. Uh, there was an Asian housekeeper in courtships of Eddie Father. You know, um, <laughs> Shirley Booth was Hazel. Uh, Ann B. Davis, wasn't she Allen? What was she gay? Was she gay in the Brady Bunch? Oh, Alice. Alice. <laughs> I can't believe she didn't get an Oscar uh, nomination. Jennifer for that. Lopez was made in Manhattan. <laughs> so don't nobody say nothing to them about playing maids. Don't say nothing to me about playing a maid. As long as I do a good job and I make you feel what I need to feel yeah. as care. Because I'd be damned. I couldn't have been in the help. I'll help your damn self. <laughs>
That's it, I'm coming in. Put it sideways, do that. Oh, no. Eddie Ford? Uh, I, you, man, your timing stinks. Don't tell me your boss sent you over here to harass me. No, we got a call about noise. I thought you lived with your sons. They got crowded. Well, this room is registered to an Elmore Fulton. <laughs> Why do you need an alias, Eddie? No, I don't know. Maybe I wanted to be left alone. Only you're not. Alone. No. no. Who's in there with you? Oh! <laughs> an officer. What I gotta do? Draw a dirty picture for you, huh? I got a lady from the inside. Yeah, right I now. heard. Are you listening? No, come on, tell me, really. What are you doing here, man? The manager said there was a TV blasting out of this room. Really? Oh, no, that was me. I, I turned it on. I was trying to be... What is that word? Discreet. You see, uh, my lady friend is a screamer, if you know what I mean, and I bet you do. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, anyway, the point is we're all consenting adults here, right? And there's no law against that yet, is there? And unless you want to join in, no? Then take a hike. All right, that's no, it. No, sir, officer, sir, what I meant to say was, uh, give a guy a break, okay? My lady's in waiting. Keep it down, Eddie. For that stunt. The cop has left the building. <laughs> Go ahead. Scream. Ah! You only make me look good now. What are you going to do with me, Eddie? 15 to 20% of people are in no sex and low-sex relationships. Sad. Well, no, it's not. Well, no, you know, I have to say something, and, and in the spirit of our hero women who are open and transparent and vulnerable, I, really I, we can all take a dose of that ourselves. And, and I will share with all of you, and especially you, Dr. Tiffany, I mean, I haven't had sex in 29 years. Wow. wow. Do I feel like less of a person for it? No, not no. even remotely. Tim, I would think no. you would have a line of <laughs> scooters outside your door. You flatter me, Dr. Jen, but I'm a perfectly happy, fulfilled individual, and I have feelings. I of mean, it's not as do. though I'm some barren forest. And urges. Of course. Well, but, yeah. Absolutely. But why do you think it is that you haven't had sex in well, so long? Well, I mean, I know it's largely, I'm sorry, it's very personal, it's largely psychological for me. I was in a very intense relationship for a, a long time mm -hmm. and my partner ended it saying that, quite frankly, he was impatient with my sexual performance. Mm. And that was the origin of it. It was, it was at the um, cusp of AIDS and I, I think a lot of people simply we're retreated very... be, because they were concerned about their health. I yeah. certainly was yeah. and um, I'm happy to be healthy and alive, quite frankly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.